Welcome back to part four of the terrain tutorial series. This is part of the Magic Market series in which we were responsible for the terrain and the environment assets. Now, in the last part, we went over just texturing our terrain, right? I went over how you would do such a thing inside of LOPS. So we've got it rendering in Karma, but we've got a very boring terrain. It would be nice to add things like grass and rocks and trees. But to do that, we need to know how to instance. And instancing in LOPS is a bit of a process. So I'm going to take you through that. So let's begin. Back in Houdini, we can go into our terrain stage. And you know what? Let's bring in our rocks. So we can do a reference node. And with this reference node, we can just call it something like rock import. So the primitive path that we want to use is actually one that can fit inside of the terrain. So we'll just do forward slash rocks, right? And if you have multiple types of rocks, what you can do then is do something like rocks forward slash pebbles. And these can be your pebbles. And then you'll have a separate one. And this one will be rocks forward slash boulders, right? And you can have separate ones like this. You connect them all up in a line and then you start instancing them. But for now, I'm just going to use a single rock. So we'll just put this into a forward slash rocks. And then we can go down to the reference file and we can just bring in those rocks that we created. So if you've followed the rock tutorial series, then you can bring in the rocks that you have. But I'm also going to be bringing in things like foliage and you won't really have that. So, so this isn't necessarily a follow along tutorial. I'm just showing you how to instance. So we have our USD assets. Let's grab our rock compiled asset. Now, if you remember correctly, we can explore variants on this. And what that will do, if we say explore, is stack them. So just like that, they get stacked and you can also space them. Now, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is a bit of a technique that I kind of figured out, and it's a bit of a weird technique, but it works. What we can do is because we can explore each one of these as variants, we can combine them into a collection to use with our USD setup. So let's drop the spacing to zero and drop down a collection node. So the collection node is a bit of an interesting node. It creates a collection that can be referenced. So you can put all of your rocks into a collection and then you can use that to instance. So you can instance the collection. So we need to give this collection a name. So we're going to call this rock collection. And the primitives that we want inside of here are going to be forward slash explore variants, forward slash rocks. And instead of choosing just one of them, we're going to put an asterisk. So we're saying all of these rocks, make all of these rocks in explore variants part of this collection. Okay, so we've got one collection and now we can actually instance. So to instance, what we're going to use is an instancer and it's instance to points. Over here, we can just put it in before our lighting setup. Instance to points, first input, you'll put your terrain, second input, you'll put your points. Now you don't necessarily want to scatter this onto this terrain, what I like to do is make a separate terrain because then I can have more control. So usually what you would do is you would go inside and you would sort of bring in this over here, this terrain that you have, and you would adjust it at the sub level inside of this instance to points. And that's a perfectly fine workflow, but I like to have separate control over all of my scatter instances. To do that is a bit different. So the first thing we're going to do is actually set this up. To set up an instancer, you need to give a primitive path. The way that this is done is you go terrain, forward slash rocks, forward slash, and then, you know, the particular rocks that you're adding. So we don't have particular rocks, but as you can see over here, when we do this, it now puts our rocks that we have as a point instancer inside of our terrain. So our terrain has its two meshes, its materials, and these rocks. So we're not going to use an internal SOP. We're going to be using an external SOP. We're going to need to create this, but for now we'll set up the rest of this. So go down to the bottom and where it says prototype source, we'll be using second input, but not use entire stage. What we're going to do is in this prototype primitives, we're going to use a percentage sign and this allows us to call in rock collection. So this is how you call in a collection. So you have your rock collection and you're calling it into the prototype primitives. The cool thing about that is it will randomly, and you can see a prototype index random, it will randomly take rocks from your collection and instance it to points. 
but we don't have any points. So let's go create some. So go up a level and in our terrain gen, we can do it there or separately. And I prefer to do it like this. Inside of this, you can just create a terrain instance points. Dive inside and over here, we're going to object merge in our terrain, object merge, terrain out. So now we have our terrain. With our terrain being brought in, what we can do is drop some normals on it. And then we can go ahead and drop down a scatter and a line. And this is a new node that I believe was introduced in 18.5, but it's a really cool node. By default, it'll just scatter a bunch of points everywhere. But you can go over here to coverage, where it says no scaling, you can say scale by attribute. If you do that, you can also click over here on this paint option. And much like with painting a mask on your terrain, you can paint a mask for your rocks. So we can mouse wheel to increase the size of our brush, decrease this FG float. This is just how harsh the brush is. So by default, it'll put, you know, full value of one, red is a value of one. But if we drop it, it'll put a lower value. And then we change the paint mode to add. This gives us control as to where our rocks are concentrated. So we can have a very light concentration of rocks in most places. So just doing it like this. And then we can really focus on areas where we want a lot of rocks. So we can add extra rocks over here. Perhaps we want some by the waterfall area, more inside of the rock pool area, some around the market, and perhaps some on the side. All right, so I'm just throwing some areas where we're going to have some rocks. Now, if we go to our scatter and align, we have scattered points in those areas. And what we can do now is decrease the minimum radius and it'll add more points to those areas. We also have a lot of other options, right? We have relax iterations and orientation. Orientation is pretty cool because if we do a copy two points, this orient attribute is automatically generated. So we can test it out by dropping cubes and you can see that they orient themselves to the shape of the terrain which is really cool because if we view our terrain as a template, you can see that they sit nicely on the various surfaces of our terrain. So that's especially good for rocks because that's exactly how rocks would sit. Um, one thing that I am noticing is that it's going underneath on this terrain. Um, yeah, so it's going underneath like that. And to stop that from happening, you can switch on this over here, this visible only. That way, if you paint on one side, it doesn't come through on the other side. So yeah, we can just erase all of this underneath. Okay, so let's see. Our copy to points puts all of these on our geometry. Looking pretty good. So now what we can do is remove this box and remove the copy to points and just use these points with a null. These can be our rock instance points. So now if we go back into our terrain stage, and on this instance to points, we now select the SOP path. We can go ahead and choose our rock instance points. And look at that. We have rocks scattered all over our terrain and they have different orientations and different scales. So what you will notice is, for example, over here, these two rocks have the same orientation and that's actually an easy fix. That's because of the scatter and align rotation around normal. So all you have to do is increase the maximum angle and let's take a look at that. And yeah, that fixes it. So now if we go to our camera over here and just look through camera one and let this render. So as you can see, that begins to scatter some rocks for us. The next logical step would be to add other assets. So from here, we would want to add perhaps even more rocks. Um, so perhaps on this cliff face over here, you want to cover that in rocks and you want to add pebbles and there's all sorts of things that you can add. So let's add one more. So let's do this again. We'll reference and I'm going to reference in some of the things that we used for the actual magic market. So yeah, I just have a grass asset and you can take a look. It's a very simple grass asset. And this once again has variants to it. So let's do what we've done before. The primitive path will put this as foliage forward slash grass because we'll probably put more things into foliage. We can then do at explore variants and set this to explore variants. And you can see we have the various types of grass, zero spacing, 
and then put them into a collection. This collection, once again, we can call grass collection. The primitive that we want to put in is this explore variance too. So forward slash explore variance, foliage, grass, forward slash, asterisk. Right, so this is the general way that you would do it. And once again, you can instance points. And when you instance these points in, you can once again put a primitive path. So forward slash terrain, forward slash foliage, forward slash grass. And now if we take a look, we have over here the terrain and foliage and inside of foliage is grass. So to copy these two points, we'll use an external SOP. We'll go and create some points. We'll use the second input, but not the entire stage. And the primitives to use percentage sign grass collection. So now we go up and we can once again create another one of these. So we can actually just duplicate all of this over if we want. It's completely okay to do it like this. So on our paint coverage attribute over here, we'll just want to paint some grass. So for our grass, we can just say reset all changes. And we want grass over here around the pathway area. Okay, so put that into your scatter align. And we can increase the coverage because we want quite a bit of grass. And we can call this grass instance points. Go over into here. And once again on the sub path, just select our grass points. So as you can see, we have these tiny patches of grass. So we probably want those to be bigger. Okay, so we have a bit of a problem in that if we change the radius of our grass, it changes the number of points we have. So we could go by density or number of points, but it's actually okay for us to just multiply the size of our grass. So we can drop a wrangle node and in here, just put at p scale times equals three. And I'm also just going to remove these points that go over to the side here. Okay, so with our p scale times equals three, we should have much bigger patches of grass and we do. So now it's just a matter of changing our grass a bit. Let's do more grass. So now if we take a look at this with the grass. So as you can see, it really starts to get fleshed out. The more things you add to these scenes, the better it looks. And really it's about layering. So from this point, you would just add more plants and some flowers and adjust your lighting. And I'm actually going to show you the scene from the magic market. So in here, you can see this is the exact same thing that you saw earlier, where we're bringing in the terrain and we're applying a material. Over here, we have things like the rocks and I have different types of rocks. I have rocks that are smoothed and those go in the water. I have rougher rocks that are scattered on the ground and then ones that are more like pebbles. And as you can see, these are all the reference nodes. So you bring in the water rocks, the ground rocks, small rocks, periwinkle, rubber bush, grass, ferns, ramping fumatory, twigs, lily of the valley, and trees. And then you do this for each one of them. You explore variants, configure layer, put them into a collection, and then you instance them onto each selection of points. Once you've done all of that, you end up with this, where you have a whole bunch of assets all set up in here. So as you can see, there's plants and there's rocks and bushes and all sorts of things. And when you eventually render it out, it ends up looking like this. So thank you for joining me. Um, I hope that you picked up some workflow techniques to work with USD and Solaris. And perhaps you'll go ahead and make your own terrain now, all right? It doesn't have to be one like this. You can do whatever you want. Um, just find your own assets and you can fill up a terrain with whatever you want. And this is actually far less resource intensive than you may think. With all of these things in the scene, I believe it only used about 18 to 19 gigs of RAM when it was actually rendering, which is crazy. So the instancing is really powerful. You can put a lot of material in your scene. And so, yeah, thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this series as well as all of the other tutorials in the Magic Market series. If you haven't watched the Rock tutorial series, I would suggest you watch that. It is actually a follow along tutorial, unlike this one. That one, you create a rock from scratch. So you create procedural rocks and you use top nets and lock nets and it's pretty interesting. So I would recommend checking that out. 
as well as the L system tutorial that we released. It is a beginner L system tutorial. All of these plants are made with L systems. So yeah, if you want to go check that out, feel free. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you around. Bye.